This wonderful lady back here has got her hand up so nicely. Thank you. What are we afraid I'm, of? Well, I'm wondering if it's an existential issue where we identify so much with our beliefs that that is how we see ourselves. And if we have to let go of those beliefs, we're afraid we'll lose ourselves. Absolutely. That's it. In a nutshell. Bingo. Period. End of story. Matter of fact, you probably should come up here and teach this. I think I'm going to leave. <laughs> no, you nailed it. That's it. That's absolutely it. We are, we are so identified in who we think we are that if we abandon that belief, it's like oblivion. We perceive it's like oblivion, oblivion, oblivion to the soul. But it's not. It's, see, that's one of the tricks of the subconscious mind. It's actually where your wholeness exists to walk away from it. But you don't know that until you've walked away from it. And one of the things that's actually going on now, this is actually very interesting. People partially walk away from it, and then they turn around. They turn around. There's a great metaphor for this in the Bible by a man named Lot and his wife, who's now a pillar of salt. <laughs> and it said, no, we're getting out of this place. Whatever you do, don't turn around. Like, okay, if God says don't turn around, what the hell are you thinking <laughs> by turning around? Like, see, it's like, even when God comes down and says something, it's like, I'm going to play by my own rules. So we've got to really think about what we're doing. We've got to go right into what is the problem. We're afraid of losing our identity. That is, like, what would happen if you completely lost your identity? It's driven some people completely mad throughout history. I mean, you could read about them. They're everywhere, you know? Some people that have gone down this road of knowledge have gone completely crazy because they haven't had a foundation of truth and they've slipped into the minefield of thinking. And it is a minefield. You've got to be very careful. No question about it. It is full of rabbit holes. And every once in a while, I'll see somebody that they're just going down there, and all of a sudden, whoosh, they're down the hole. And then i got to send Suzanne to get them out of the hole. <laughs> but it, it, it really is true. So the way to prevent that from going down a hole is to hold the foundation of truth above absolutely everything. Above what I say, above what the person sitting next to you says, above what your spouse says, you've got to hold a higher truth that guides you. It's your light. It's yours personally. Okay? And that truth is more life. More life. Now, does anybody see anything wrong with this? Is this evil in any way? Is this holding you back in any way? It's pretty simple, but it's extremely powerful. Because there are so many things said in that statement that aren't said. Like, more life is abundance. There is no lack in that statement. It means more life. More of everything. There is no lack. Lack is a perception. People say, well, but you cannot deny, David, that there's a limited amount of this, that, and the other. No, that's just your perception that there's a limited amount. Even Waddles pointed that out in The Science of Getting Rich 100 years ago. He said, even if we were to run out, more would be created from the formless stuff. God will never let you be without any good thing. So we've fallen into what's, what actually happens when we see a limited supply of anything. No? No? 
Somebody said it. No? No, there's a perception shift that takes place when that happens. You're not the center anymore. You think you're a thing in a world of things. You think you're a thing in the world of things. 